Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and we'll get into our teaching. Anyone would like to pray? Go ahead, Francis. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time, Father. Thank you for everything. Thank you for a good day, Lord. Lord Jesus, we are coming to the second section. Thank you for you are with us. Help uh, the pastor to teach us, Lord. Uh, give you the wisdom and knowledge to understand the things, Lord. We are asking the wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So last class we did chapter 6 and chapter 7. Chapter 6 we talked about organizational structure. And then in chapter 7 we talked about innovation and creativity. Okay, so we get to chapter eight. Chapter eight is very interesting because it's, uh, chapter eight has uh, a lot of practical insights. And uh, these practical insights are, uh, you know, we, so this portion, this chapter is written from a leader's point of view, like a pioneer's point of view, right? So um, there'll be a few, you know, points here where we feel, okay, I'm not. I may not start my own business, but I'm just going to be working or I'm going to be uh, serving in a church. Uh, but these are, you know, eventually remember that you will, when you join an organization, you will grow into leadership, right? And as you grow into leadership, these are, uh, you know, certain categories that you will begin to work with, right? So let's look at chapter eight. People, processes, performance, and rewards right uh, you know hrm human resource management is managing people which is a very important aspect of an organization right i'm sure all of you have heard of a hr human resource right uh, so there's employee motivation there's resolving conflicts performance evaluation employee rewards employee retention uh, and so in an organization it's very important to be able to meet the needs of the people who are working for you as your staff, right? It's it's very little to do about, okay, it's my organization, it's my company, and I want to do it that my way. Uh, it's not always it's not always that way, right? We need to be able to, you know, uh, bring in employee motivation. Why is why should a person stay in this company or this organization when he or she has 20 other options in 20 other places or in different countries right why why is this person staying so we're going to look at this chapter and uh, you know bring out some aspects on people processes performance and rewards right number 1 <clears throat> pay fairly based on contribution and value to the organization Colossians chapter 4, 1 says, Masters, give your bond servants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Now, this is what I meant when I said, you know, as you know, this chapter is mostly looking from a pioneer's point of view. But as an organization, it's very important to pay fairly. Right? So, for example, there's a person who's working for maybe you know he it's not always tenure meaning it's not always like a person should be working for five years only then he'll get a good pay it's not always you know nowadays especially now in this generation you have the skills you have the ability people are willing to pay you right uh you and now with people working remotely I mean, um, you have the skill you have the ability i'll pay you you get the work done that's all what matters Right. And if uh, you know, I know a lot of folks who are into just an example, right? Graphic designers. Right? I have a few friends who are graphic designers. They don't have a schedule. Right? They wake up whatever time they feel like. Right. Uh, but they're very good at their job. Right? They wake up whatever time they feel like, they open their laptop whenever they feel like they all work from home. Right. And they do their work. They sit up at night, they go out for lunch, they come back. I'll be looking at them and say, what is this? You know, and they're doing well, they're doing very well. Right? But the thing is, they've got the skill. 
they've got the ability they've worked hard to learn the skill that they have right so as employees as employers we need to pay our people justly and fair right I have a mutual understanding uh, do they have the current knowledge do they have the current skills do they have um, the ability to solve problems do they have the ability to make decisions right to uh, have you know the ability to stand as a leader right provide leadership skills uh, the ability to build communications build gaps in an organization these are intangible skills that you and I have and we must use it right we cannot expect an organization to pay us well and do nothing about it right? there was this um, very uh, hilarious video that somebody sent me a long time back this interviewer is asking a little boy probably about six or seven year old boy said, do you want to be rich he said yes the little boy said, yes, I want to be rich. So what do you want to do when you want to be rich? I want to do very little work. right? And what will you gain by doing very little work? I want to become gain very a lot of money by doing very little work. And he's a six-year-old boy. Now, that doesn't work in reality. right? In reality is you have the skills, you put it into place, you get paid. Right? And nowadays, you know, we have this whole this this whole thing of you know gender, you know, uh, uh, male and female. All of that has gone out the window. Because in this generation, it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female, as long as you have the skills. You have the skills, an organization will pay you. Right? Never permit culture or entitlement to set in. The moment people operate with an idea that they deserve the role or they deserve the position, position they begin to, uh, you know, it, it impairs performance, right? So, for example, if I believe that I, I deserve the role that I have, then my performance goes down. And it brings, uh, you know, lethargy, it demoralizes others. Nobody's encouraged to do uh, the work that they're doing. Right. Well, let me just share the notes so we can all be on the same page. Okay, number two. Oops, sorry. Yes, number two, ensure people are paid on time. Leviticus. 1913. Go ahead. Anyone can read that? Do not rob or take advantage of anyone. Do not hold back the bets of someone you have hired, not even for one night. you are leading an organization and you know for example some of you are going to become pastors you, know, you have associate pastors or you have staff members with you ensure they're paid on time don't say wait i don't have the money now you know i'll give you after three days all of that is not there right when you're when you when they have worked you've got to pay them on time what does the Bible say? Don't take advantage of anyone. Do not hold back wages from someone you have hired, not even for a night. Not even for one night. right? Organizations, uh, most organizations have a monthly cycle. right? So there are some organizations who pay once in two weeks. Some of them pay uh, bi-weekly. Some of them pay uh, you know, once a week. Right? But mostly, if you look at India, it's always a monthly cycle. So um, remember that the people that you have hired have families. They probably have people to take care of in their family. So we don't withhold money. And when you do that, the scriptures present this as a violation and it's a regard and is regarded as a sin. When we hold back wages that are that we have to pay somebody and we don't give it back, it's regarded as sin. 
right? So when an organization is probably strapped and may not be in a position to make salary payments, that's all right, right? We can probably send an email, tell them, okay, this is what is happening, give them the details, but don't keep them into, you know, uh, you know, just wait for it. Whenever I feel like I will decide to give, no, that's wrong, right? Uh, uh, the organization has to be able to pay its people, right? So for example, something that we do at APC is that when we have vendors, right? Now, you know that we use a lot of vendors, right? Coffee, food, tea, everything that are vendors, LED screen, sound system, every place that are vendors. Not one of them, I, mean, I would say that what we do is we get the budget, the budget comes in, we get the approval. The moment the approval is got, right? the moment, so okay, this is approved, LED screen for the next six months approved, the payment is done. Right? So then it is their responsibility to come and do it. Right? We don't say, uh, you know, you do it. Then we, when we have the time, when we have the money, we'll, no. Funds are given immediately so that people know that we value their what they're doing. Right? They're coming, they're setting up the LED, doing the song, they value it. Right? And they know that we will pay them. I remember this one time, something happened, and this happened a long time back, I think 2014, I think, 2015. Something happened, the, the payment got delayed. Right? But this vendor of ours, he never even called us back. Right? And it was a couple of months later that they came and uh, you know, they, they said, see, this is what has happened. Uh, actually, I didn't get paid for this two months or whatever the time frame was. And then when we went into it, we saw that somewhere in the, it was an internal problem, right? Somewhere in the emails or somewhere in the, it had, it had gone by. But what surprised us was, he said, I knew that I'll get paid because I worked with you for so many years. I know that APC will pay. Somewhere something has gone wrong. So I came to just let you know. But I'm not in a hurry. I know you all will pay, pay us. So that is that is the standard that you and I must set as an organization. It's hard, right? It takes time to set that standard, but you can we you and I can do it, right? Don't exploit people, don't hold back wages. That's what we've been talking about. God forbids us from exploiting, cheating our employees. Uh, when something is rightfully theirs, just give it to them. Never exploit the poor and the powerless. Deuteronomy 24, 14, you shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, whether one of your brethren or one of the aliens who is in your land or within your gates. Right now, one of the, when we look at the Old Testament especially, there was a lot of oppression where the rich people would oppress the poor. It was very common in the Old Testament. Right, and that's why the story of, uh, you know, Boaz and Ruth is so wonderful, right? See, Boaz was a rich man, right, and and when he he had the right to oppress the people, it was his field, but he said, let the people glean, let them take whatever they want. Don't 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 be behind them. Don't uh, you know trouble them. Let them take whatever they want. Let them glean. In the in the in the the crops, and when God saw that, God honored him, right? And he was blessed. He decided not to oppress the people. Did he have the ability? Yes, but he decided not to. So, in the old covenant, especially, it's very common where the rich would oppress the poor. We saw a little bit of it in the new covenant as well, right? Where the Romans were oppressing. The Jews. And we can also see it now where we can have leaders uh, and pioneers or people who are in business oppressing their staff. Right? Uh, and when we do that, we are it's sin, sinning against God. 
Right? And so we must never do that. Proverbs, there are plenty of verses. Proverbs 22, 22, not rob the poor because he is poor or oppress the afflicted at the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and plunder the soul of those who plunder them. Right? Next point. Higher right, retain and review. Proverbs 26 and verse 10. Anyone like to read that? Any employer who hires any fool that comes along is only hurting everybody concerned. Yeah. Higher right, retain and review. When in an organization, we have to hire right. Just because I have a friend, I don't hire him. That, that person must be able to do the task for what the job is, right? You hire right, you can do things right. You retain people by giving them value in an organization. Right? What is the meaning of retaining? You keep them in an organization, right? You, when you hire somebody, you know that they're an asset to the organization, you retain them. Right? You give opportunities, you spread their horizons, meaning you give them, you don't make them you know, stay in that same cage for many years. You give them opportunities. Now what will happen is if we don't retain, people will look at other opportunities. Now, there's nothing wrong in looking for other opportunities, right? Uh, but it's very important to do our best. Now, see, I cannot control. So, for example, I start a church or I start a ministry or an organization. I hire some people. Three years down the line, that the person who I really liked right, may decide to get another job elsewhere. Now, I may say, hey, um, you know, that's why we have exit interviews. Uh, ask them, oh, is there something that went wrong? from our end? Or is there something that we could have done better to help you uh, to stay back? Or is there another role that you'd prefer to do? Right? And so they share. And if it's possible, they stay back. Right? I can give you an example of what happened to me was uh, when I was working in one of the, uh, you know, in the corporate. Uh, in about six months, I put my papers down. I said, I want to quit. OK. and. Uh, and then they said, the manager called us and said, why do you want to quit? So I had an exit interview. They said, no, I'm not happy with what I'm doing. I feel I can do so many other things better than this. OK, those days, I didn't have any commitments. Okay, <laughs> So I was just, I said, I'm not happy. And I want to do something more than this. And I remember this exit interview. I was probably about 21, 22. And I was talking to these managers. And they were saying, OK, Paul, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give you opportunities to travel. You, know, you can go to different places and you can you know start training people on uh, you know language and communication so is that something you'd be interested i said yes right so i said where will you what are the opportunities that I have? we can send you overseas we can send you to other countries we can send you within our nation i said okay i'll stay back Ex done <laughs> i went back i went back sat at my desk continued working it was a very simple interview why? Because they gave me better op opportunities, right? And I knew that, you know, if they said it, they'll do it, right? And so, thank God. I mean, I got so many opportunities to travel, and uh, so this is one of the ways that you can retain people. Right now, you don't retain people by saying, "Hey, I'll send you here, send you there," and then tell them, "No, you stay here <laughs> after two months," right? You, you, what, when you say something, you must do it, right? Um, and then you review people. Now, just because they have the ability, just because they have, um, you know, skills, doesn't mean that they are perfect, right? As a leader, you must be able to review their work, right? Every year, right? Uh, it's been more than a decade that we are working here, right? Every year we have a re review, and over the years we keep having reviews, right? Uh, so we have reviews as a pastoral team, as staff. And for each area of ministry, we review what we did. 2023, this is what we did. 2024, you know. Uh, so at the end of 24, we will review the whole work we've done. 
So 2025, 20, we will see, OK, this is what was done. This is this thing work. This didn't work. And uh, we review the entire work that is to, given to us. Now, reviews help us to do better. It, it helps us understand that, OK, these are areas that I should not have gone into, or these are areas I could have done better. Right? It's not to bring us down, but reviews help us get better. Right? Uh, you know, for example, you're learning an instrument. You play for one year, you go back and you review yourself. Oh man, okay, I didn't know these chords. At least I've learned these chords in this year. Right? It helps us. So, so when you're when it comes to hiring people, hire right. And just because somebody looks good, don't hire them. Just because somebody dresses well, don't hire them. Just because somebody stays near the office, don't hire them. Right? You should hire the right people, retain the right people, and review them. Help them grow. Right Now, uh, uh, as I said, in retaining, there will be people who will choose to leave. We cannot hold them back. Right? Uh, but one of the things we can do is find out why they want to leave. And, uh, so that the organization can get better. So we have something called as performance reviews, uh, feedback improvement, creating culture where everyone is able to address their problems, meet each other's needs, right, and talk to everyone. Sixth one. Uh, okay, I'm just going to keep going. If you have questions, just uh, feel free to stop me and ask your questions, right? Okay, sixth one. Treat people the way you would like to be treated. Luke 6, 31 and 36. Luke chapter 6, verse 31 and 36. Do for others just what you want them to do for you. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. As a leader, you treat people how you would like to be treated. Yes or no? If remember that, you know, maybe one time you were uh, an employee. Right now, you may be a leader in an organization, but one time you were an employee. So you treat people the way you like to be treated. How do I like to be treated? With respect, with dignity, corrected in private, uh, applauded in public. That's something that we always do, right? Uh, now, if if you were the employee, how would you like to be treated? Extend mercy and compassion. And again, this is a reciprocating relationship. That means if you want to be treated well as an employee, you got to get give 100% in the work that you and you're doing. Now, if I'm giving 10% of my, if the boss says, OK, do these five tasks. And I don't do any of those, or maybe I do one of those five. Then the boss says, come, I want to meet with you, talk to you. Now, don't expect the boss to say, oh, very good. At least you did, out of five, you did one. So we can cut a cake later. He's not going to say that. He's going to give it to you, right? Why? Because the work is not done. So if I want to be treated well, and I want to be treated with respect, I must also be able to fulfill the, my work responsibilities, right? Again, in being a leader, here's the thing: we need to, you know, show goodness. We need to show mercy, but we also need to be, you know, make sure that there's hard work, there is correction, there's exhortation, right? So you be balanced. That uh, you you want to do well, you should also be willing to do well. Right? Uh, meaning, if you want, as an in an organization, if you feel uh, that you're not being treated well, you know there are other ways to you know handle that. But uh, you do your best; the organization will do their best for you. Right? Next point: warn, but never threaten or abuse. Read that verse: Ephesians six, eight, and nine. Remember that the Lord will reward each of us, whether slave or free, for the good work we do. Masters, behave in the same way toward your slaves and stop using threats. 
remember that you and your slaves belong to the same master in heaven who judges everyone by the same standard yeah. so the whole point of this is god is your ultimate boss god is our ultimate boss or our employer and then we have our boss who god has placed in our life where we report to and as leaders there will come a time when you have to you know warn people because people have different mindsets right people have different when we're working with people it's very very different right? especially now uh, how do i put this now in, in in the corporate sector it's a different world altogether now in ministry we need to be a little bit careful right uh, we need to be wise on how we do things but the bible also teaches that the apostle paul he didn't just say god is love every time he exhorted he corrected he rebuked what did he do to the galatians what did he do to the corinthians to the galatians he said you're foolish now that's not uh something nice to hear but he warned them he said as believers if you are going back to circumcision i warn you that what you believe in the cross is useless he's warning them you either choose circumcision or you choose salvation through the cross don't do both he's warning them to the corinthians he says you people are coming one is saying i follow paul one is saying i follow apollos one is saying i follow cephas there's division among you and then you're having lord's table as if it is breakfast right so so all of this is causing problems so he's warning them he's warning them he's saying this is wrong right he's not saying you know do whatever you want no right as an apostle he's telling them what to do what not to do so the same way as an employer you need to tell people i remember i was a bible college leader there's my opportunity i start telling people then i started warning people right uh, but not in a bad way but i would tell them see two years will get over I'm warning you <laughs> after two years what you'll do you can't do this in your house right i'll keep warning them I'll keep telling them there's nothing wrong in doing that right and uh, uh, it, it, what happens is well, we are helping them get better but we're not threatening them we're not abusing them we're not uh, forcing our will upon them and say you have to do it no we warn them we correct them I'm sorry, I, I love what Apostle Paul does. He, he exhorts them. He corrects them. He says, "It's the choice is yours." And I'm not going to, as an apostle, I have the right to speak into your life, but I'm not going to force it. You decide what you want to do. Right? Then, empower people for high performance. Proverbs thirty twenty four to twenty eight. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a pupil, not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with its hands, and it is in king's palaces. This is a perfect example of empowering people for high performance, right? Uh, let's look at these uh, examples, right? Three things here: ants, or oh, quite a few actually, ants, rock badgers, locusts, and spiders, right? Now, Solomon is taking the example of nature and he's bringing out high performance. Look at this: the ants. I'm sure all of us have seen these ants, no? My performance. You go and destroy that line. That line goes somewhere else. You come back after half an hour, what happens? It's back. 
somehow they've got it back. Now they don't have a leader. They don't have somebody who can, you know, tell them do this, do that. They work as a team. Who tells the ants rainy season is going to start? So start say start storing up. They just know, right? And the moment they know, high performance starts. You don't see ants simply walking around here. If you do see them, they've lost their way. But they're not just sitting in one place. They're trying to find their way back. God has designed ants that way for empowerment, teamwork, and high performance. Imagine ants store up food for like three or four months during the summer so that in the winter, they have enough food for themselves. Can you think about that? Ants have the ability to carry more than 10 times of their weight. Have you seen those ants? You know, they'll be walking. Suddenly, you see, they'll be carrying one dead spider over. You know, they're able to. What are they doing? They're working as a team. We need to get this to the storehouse. This can be a good meal during the winter season. High performance. Right? Look at two. The rock badgers. I don't know if you've seen the rock badgers. They're very feeble. Okay, They're very... Um, very timid animals, the rock badgers, but they make their homes in crags. Crags are like, um, uh, like um, in, in between these mountainous areas, right? Look at the locusts. They have no king, right? Yet they advance in ranks. And the spider skillfully grasps with his hands, and it is in the king's palace. If you look at spiders, it's very interesting. You know, spiders have a very they you know they're considered one of the most tactful predators on earth can you believe spiders you know what they do they make a web they spend all their energy making a web and they sit and wait in the corner of the web have you noticed that right or they they sling down from the web and choose a place that is little away from the web and they sit and watch and when any insect or any mosquito comes, they're stuck there. No trouble. Quietly it will go, finish the meal, come back. Or it'll wait in the side. Yeah. These are, I'm talking about home spiders, but you should look at, you should, uh, you know, read about these spiders that are in jungles and the, the, the wild spiders, extreme predators, right? They're able to, uh, you know, catch insects and animals double their size. Who taught them all this? God was able to, you know, God has made them in a way for high performance. So empower people with their skills, training, equipment, equipping, and uh, and give them the tools that they need to build them up. Right? So one of the wonderful verses is, look at the ants, you sluggard. Right? They, uh, they, we can learn by looking at the ants. That we are not called to be lazy. God has called us to put an effort and do our best, right? <laughs> Next one. Remember, sweetness of the lips increases learning. Proverbs 16, 21 and 24. Okay. Proverbs 16, verse 21 and 24. The wise in heart will be called prudent, and sweetness of the lips increase learning. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Now, learning takes place in phases. Right? Uh, we cannot force feed learning. Example, we can take a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink. Have you heard of that saying? Right? You take a horse till the water, you can't make it drink. It will drink when it wants to drink. Right? You can't force a person to learn this. You can't force a person to complete your DTH or your BTH. You can't force a person. You can encourage them. You can't force them. But sweetness of the lips increases learning. Uh, continuous learning and skill development is essential for the organization. So you keep encouraging people. Keep encouraging learning. Never stop learning till your last breath. Don't stop learning. Keep learning. Keep growing. 
make mistakes it's okay to make mistakes right there was a phase in my life you know uh they said okay now you're a pastor and i thought okay i shouldn't make any mistakes uh, pastor that is that's, that's unnatural everyone will make mistakes pastor is just a title but you're still a human being and mistakes will happen right but you learn from those mistakes right and sweetness of the lips meaning when we speak politely speak gently take things positively uh, and uh, encourage people then it really builds us up right it it, it empowers us to be better people right uh, pleasant words are like honey they encourage the person they invigorate refresh and inspire imagine right uh, i remember you know we just went for our parent teacher meeting for my son and um, you know after the whole thing he did well in his studies but uh, the teacher said you know your son is a uh, very good boy very quiet boy but he's very naughty in class he keeps running around he keeps you know uh, he's very distracted he wants to always play right and then we finished the whole thing and then when he came back home i asked him um uh, i asked him he was there for the parent teacher meeting and i asked him why did why, what do you do in the class he said uh, uh, you know why are you so distracted he said no my friends always say this <laughs> you know uh, but i remember telling him see as a teacher i'm also a teacher when it, when people are distracted in the class that means they don't value your teaching do you value your teacher he said yeah i like my teacher so much then i said then you should sit quietly in the class you should listen to what they say and it just went into him and this you know he was saying uh, i want to write a letter to my teacher and say i'm sorry for troubling and you know so so sweetness of lips but the last time there was no sweetness of lips i was very strict right uh, and i did see the changes right but there are times you and i need to use both Look at the Apostle Paul. He talked about Galatians and Corinth, Corinthians, right? But what does he also say to the Galatians? You are my beloved children. Sweetness of the lips. To the Corinthians, he says, "I have, I have, I have, I have. You know, you have been born through my ministry, right?" Uh, and he's encouraging them, saying, "Continue in the gifts. These are the gifts that you have." And he blesses them. right so there are times when you have to be stern sweetness of lips is also very important right? you can't be always stern what will happen is that person will get dejected but every now and then we need to encourage them be supportive next point be supportive even when people make mistakes proverbs 19:11 Smart people know how to hold their tongue. Their danger is to forgive and forget. Smart people know how to hold their tongue. Hold their tongue means not literally hold their tongue and stab, <laughs> right? <laughs> hold their tongue meaning they know when to speak, what to speak, and why to speak. That's wisdom, right? And we talked about it, right? Uh, how our words can get us into trouble. and our words can get us out of trouble as well so all of us make mistakes learn how to respond to make mistakes uh, whether the mistakes are big whether the mistakes are small uh, of course if you're working in an organization big mistakes um, it's good to have a good boss who can you know help you and over help you overcome those big mistakes uh, but remember part of uh, if you are a leader now for example you're going to start your church you have a and you have a young boy attending your church and he overslept on sunday he did not open the church he didn't do the setup but don't call him and give him a piece of his mind of your mind i right? it's okay he's a young boy right he overslept why didn't you sleep the whole night what were you doing watching tv watching the phone it's okay we did it when we were young right they probably 19 20 years old what do you want him to do pray the whole night he is not able to do that right but he comes in the morning every sunday but one sunday he overslept right it's okay don't tell from now on you are not in the sound and setup team exit out no 
And you give them, people learn from them, mistakes. but you tell him or her, what is the result of those mistakes? See, see, I understand you overslept, but this is what has happened. When we came in the morning, everything was, you know, uh, you know that you're the main person. You had to be here to set up. But everything was all over the place. We were struggling. Uh, and so it was very difficult to get things set up in the morning. So next time, if you feel that way, just let us know. And we can get somebody else to fill in for you for that Sunday. Very simple, right? Uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, don't just you know, look at a person and, and decide what he or her, she is. Right? You may give somebody to preach in your youth meeting. A person will go in on the stage and may preach for 10 minutes and it may not be good. Now you feel, oh, it's not good. So we don't say, OK, you didn't preach well. No, it's the first time. Anybody will be nervous, right, now preaching. So you help them to you know, get, uh, get better in what they're doing. Uh, extend support when people are struggling within the organization. Sometimes all they need is a little push. Just a little push. And then they may, you know, you may put them in the place where God wants them to be. Right? Uh, uh, as long as people are willing to learn and make an effort to grow, support them. If they are complacent, indifference, or defensive about their perf performance, you will need to show them the exit. You understood that? If people are willing to learn, willing to uh, you know, accept their mistakes, give them more opportunities. But when a person says, no, it's not my mistake. I did it like this because I knew it will be better. But if a person says, oh, you know, this is the poor performance because all this happened. Right? So it's not my mistake. Right? Now what will happen? They they are not in a place to learn. They're not in a place to improve. Give them one warning, two warnings. Show them the exit after that. It's good. Why? Because it's your your the organization is in priority first. Right? You're trying to build an organization, so you give warnings. Right? One warning, two warnings, maybe three warnings. Um, and different organizations have that. Right? Uh, give them warnings. And then if there's no improvement, you uh, show them the exit. But uh, the, our main responsibility is to help them get better. right? One standard for all, no partiality. Let's read Proverbs 28, 21. To show partiality is not good, because for a piece of bread, a man will transgress. Don't show partiality in the office. Is it there in offices, organizations? It will definitely be there. Right? Now, if you are on the receiving end of partiality, don't worry. You pray to God. God is the one who will grant you favor. Why was, you think about this, why was the king so in favor of Daniel? Did Daniel say, when you come back to Jerusalem, I'll give you some money. I'll give you a good house. Nothing. Daniel, God's favor was upon him. It was not partiality. But the other people thought, hey, why is this king always behind Daniel, giving him all the opportunities? That's because God's favor was on him. Right? But as a leader, I must not show partiality. I give everyone opportunities. But when I give everyone opportunities, I also watch what they are doing with that opportunity. And if they're taking it lightly, if it's something that they don't value, I will wait. I will not give them the opportunity again. I will wait. Right? Because something given freely has no value. I always believe that. Right? Something that's just given has no value. Right? That's why I always, you know, uh, when I see people taking our APC publications, I always say, use it well. It's free. Don't just throw it here and there. Right? 
use it well value it right so you one standard for all no partiality in office whether you're tall short tall fair dark handsome not handsome you have uh, you know a car you have a bike all of that don't matter everyone are equal in an organization right okay next one listen to all sides of the story proverbs 18:17 the first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him now as we are dealing with people we will in an organization there will be conflicts there will be indifferences there will be people who need to be disciplined so very important learn and listen to both sides of the story if somebody comes up to you and says uh you know pastor that uh, other person said that you are not preaching uh correct doctrine and don't go straight to that person and say hey why are you saying i'm not teaching the right doctrine you don't have to do that listen to both sides of the story it could be a completely different scenario right um don't be quick to make decisions don't be uh, uh, you know uh, we want to resolve the matter quickly um uh, which is important right uh there's a sense of urgency but sometimes in all this urgency we may miss out hearing from everyone so it's very important to hear what everyone has to say this is part of leadership right and i learned this uh you know i always thought okay just stand sermon notes preach and you're good to be a pastor but all of this is there you got to listen to different sides of the story sometimes people keep talking for half an hour one hour You got to listen. You got to deal with the problem. It's part of leadership, right? But very important. Listen to all sides of the story. To settle a dispute, quiet the quarrelsome person. Right? Uh, Proverbs twenty six twenty one. Go ahead. Hey. Careless on person in a dispute is like kerosene thrown on a fire. Careless on person is like kerosene thrown on a fire. Already there's a fire. You throw kerosene on that, it's going to become even worse. <laughs> you know, but in resolving conflicts, there may be one person who will say, "Who's very angry, very upset, and it's an anger." And he or she may begin to shout, begin to say things. Oh, the best way to settle the matter is take that person aside, sit with them, calm them down, and then try to resolve the matter. Don't try to resolve the matter when the person is very angry and boisterous. And that's a natural instinct which people have. Some people, you know, they they feel very hurt and quiet. They don't say anything. Some people get angry. They say whatever they want to say. And the other people will be loud, be offensive to the others. So you resolve the matter. Fight in them first. Okay. Use the power of a gentle response. Power of Proverbs fifteen one. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Soft answer. So while resolving conflict, soft answer. Now. In a heated moment, especially, speak gently, speak peacefully. Right, uh, and and when we speak gently, it diffuses the tension. Right, people will think, okay, let me calm down. They are calm, so let me be calm. Right, and uh, when people, when dealing with people who are agitated or angry, it's very easy for us also to get angry. Right? But we must stay calm. Is that right? I get angry. And he didn't even want it. He was just wanting it was. So use the power of effective response. Okay. All right. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll continue those two other points. Yes. Okay.